All right, so I got a good one for you guys today. So if you need a product kind of like Photoshop, but you want it to be free and for Mac OS or works on an Apple, um, like a, a, you know, iMac like I have in front of me, go ahead and stay tuned. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys a different one that's kind of off the beaten trail. Some of you may know about it, some of you may not, but uh, I'll go ahead and show it to you anyway. Stay tuned. All right, so the tool is actually gonna be called something unusual. I don't even know how to pronounce it. It's Krita, I believe. It's K-R-I-T-A. There's a lot of different examples. They say it's kind of like Polish and Swedish and some other things, but I call it Krita. It's K, again, it's K-R-I-T-A. And it's a great tool. Um, you can go ahead and download it. I'll go ahead and show you in a couple of minutes here exactly how to do that. And I'll go ahead and show you some of the features that you can use on it. But um, a tool like this is gonna be very similar, like a Photoshop. Uh, you know, I found a lot of the tools that I've actually been trying to find for Mac OS, like I go to the uh, Mac, the, the Apple store, and I'm trying to download some tools. And you know, you go in there and you actually find um, all these different editors and then you, you download them from the Apple store. And you find out that they're limited. I mean, they can only, you know, you know, they can only do, uh, you know, resolutions up to a certain amount, or you can't save a file, you know, X, you know, if it's too big or something like that. So they put restrictions on it and they get you to try to buy it. Um, that's one thing, so it's not really free. And the other thing usually you find out is it doesn't have all the tools. Like, you know, you're trying to just crop something or you're trying to do something kind of like, like Photoshop would, and the things aren't where you expect them to be. And it takes you like a really long time because you're kind of reinventing the wheel. Um, you know, you're kind of used to one user interface. Um, and then this tool that you get is completely different. Well, this tool is pretty close to, like I said, a Photoshop-like tool, um, if that's what you're looking for. And it's totally free and open source. It is for the Mac. I believe it's for the PC also. But uh, in any case, go ahead and stay tuned. We're going to go kind of dive into this tool here in a second, and I'm going to show you what it's all about. All right, so let's dive in very quickly here, and we'll go ahead and show you the product, and we'll kind of show you some of the features and things like that. So the tool that I use quite a bit is Krita, K-R-I-T-A. I know I'm probably not pronouncing that right, but it is actually, if you look, you can't really see my text here, so I'll just read it to you, but it is for Mac OS, but it's for Linux and Microsoft Windows as well, so you can use it for any of those type of products. It uh, has a stable version, a stable release version of uh, December 2018, so it's fairly current. And uh, obviously, uh, here's the team that created it. <laughs> Not that you care, but there they are. Um, anyways, what I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and just uh, show you where you can download it. It's going to be uh, krita.org forward slash en forward slash. Go ahead and click on here. And it's in here, obviously. You can take a look at the product and go through all the features and things like that up here. But right up here, you can actually uh, get, get Krita now. Let um, me click on that. And then in here, if you look, you're going to find the... Um, you know, up right up here is going to be the, you know, down here I was looking at first, but up here is going to be the Mac version to actually check it out. So go ahead and download it up here, and then you can go ahead and join me on this tutorial. Although it's a really quick tutorial, so I'm going to do a better one later. All right, so in this video, I'm going to show you what Krita looks like and kind of the user interface involved in it and things like that. Obviously, it's going to be a short video, so I'll just show you like an, you know, how I can edit a photo really quickly, you know, how you save things, how you crop things, various things like that. I'm not going to, it's not a full tutorial yet. It's just going to be a very, very basic one to see if you actually like it. All right, so once you've actually downloaded it and you're actually in your uh, launch pad here, a couple different things. It's, here's the icon up here, um, K-R-I-T-A. It looks like this. So I'm going to go ahead and open up this program for you, and it's going to go ahead and load here. It takes a couple seconds to load. Again, it's a great product, and uh, the reason I chose it is because it's kind of similar to a Photoshop-type product, but at the same time, um, you know, it's going to be free. Uh, that's the main thing, and you don't have to reinvent the wheel. So if you can look at the interface here, obviously, um, you know, it's very kind of a beautiful interface uh, for a free version of software. Um, you got your color picker up here. You got brushes down here in the lower right. Um, over here, you got your toolbar that you're used to, and obviously, you have a bunch of tools at the top as well. Um, so basically, in a nutshell, uh, the reason I like this tool is just because of the ease of use and what you can do is if you go up to the top up here let's go ahead and um Actually, right here in the beginning here, it does say start. It says open file or new file. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, go ahead and create a new file. And then up here it asks for the width, the height, 1600 by 1200, resolution 300. Very similar to that Photoshop experience. So I'm going to go ahead and, and, and again, you can, you know, review this yourself. This is going to be a very short tutorial just to show you that this product exists. But I'm going to go ahead and create the document here. And you can see here's the document. So, um you know, obviously it's very uh, easy to use. Now you have your kind of document pad, you know, it shows you the size of it. You have a lot of real estate you can work off of. Obviously I could shrink this if I need to. All right, so let's get into here. So basically some of the easy features you have is, uh, let's just go through them. You have your like basically your select shapes tool, very similar up here. And, and I know it's hard for you maybe to see up here. 
but you do have a text tool up here as well. Um, you have a paintbrush, freehand brush, you have line tool, you have shapes tools. Um, you basically have a multi-brush tool. You do have a uh, cropping, uh, where is the cropping? It's somewhere in here. Uh, here it is right here, the crop tool, which is what a lot of people use. Um, and that's one of the key features. You have a transform tool. You do have uh, the color picker as well, which a lot of people use. Uh, and that's something that's obviously uh, you know used almost all the time. You do have uh, fill tools and things like that you can use as well. And then down here, you basically will have your selection tools, rectangular selection and things like that. And also your uh, continuous selection tool, kind of like the, you know, the same symbol you see in Photoshop there. You also have your pan tool and then you have your zoom tool. So everything over here is very similar. Um, down here, you have some brushes you can actually select from. So let me go ahead and choose. I'm going to choose the paintbrush over here. And then down here, I'm going to choose a couple different brushes just to show you really quickly. Um, the brush... Actually, I'm on the wrong layer. Let me go to the right layer. You know, there's one brush, but basically it's got just hundreds of different brushes you can actually use, and they're all really kind of interesting, like this one. Look at this. Um, you know, obviously you can choose different colors and things like that, but it's going to be uh, have a lot of different tools. It's got a nice graphical interface. Um, if you're into drawing and things like that, I don't have a pencil. I have a mouse I'm trying to use. Um, it's a little bit more difficult, but you can see that some of the tools that I'm selecting here, you know, are very interesting. Um, and you can make a lot of different kind of cool shapes. It does have some pencils and things like that where you can get very, very, um, you know, fine lines that actually have that kind of gradient in them uh, like you would with a pencil. So go ahead and check this out. So that's basically what this does. The other part that's really nice, obviously, if you want to just make some really simple text documents and things like that, um, <clears throat> you can go ahead and select the text tool right here. The weird thing with this is you're going to have to kind of like go like this and highlight your text field first. It's a little bit different where you just don't click click on the screen. You highlight your text field like that. You let go. But the cool part is, is then you can go into here, down here, and you can type in like think you in this little box, and then you can click um, save, and uh, you can close that. And now you have your uh, text tool, which you can move around, as you can see here. And you can go ahead and uh, you know expand that box and do things that you'd like to do with it. So uh, it just depends on how you want to go about using this tool. Um, but it's it's a you know a tool that's fairly easy to use with text and also this type of line drawing, um, shapes as well. If you want basic shapes, you click the the shape tool, and it'll let you do all different types of shapes, boxes, circles, things that you're very obviously familiar with. That's not an issue as well. Um, you do have over here, so basically you have a color picker. Um, so I'll go ahead and choose you know, green. I can choose uh, different colors over here on the color wheel. Let's choose a purple. And then we can basically, oops, I'm on the wrong layer again. It does require, there's a lot of layers here, but you can go ahead and see that this is now gonna be that purple color. So again, you love my artist's, uh, <laughs> my artist's uh, drawings here and things like that, but I'm just kind of showing you guys what this is all about. Um, and I, I hope that you can see that it's a, you know, obviously very similar to like a Photoshop type tool. Over here, again, you have your, your image layers. Um, so you can basically go from the bottom layer all the way up to the, the you know, basically they're different vector layers. And so I have to usually choose this layer because on this layer, it doesn't allow me to put the pencil. I have to go ahead and do it on a certain layer, which can take those pencil drawings. So when you're starting to use this, you'll learn those little features. Um, again, it's very similar to, to the other tools that you have out there. So let's go ahead and um, go up here. We'll go to file and we're going to close that one. And it's going to ask me if I want to save it. I'm going to click no. So let's go ahead and open a file this time. And so this is the thing, like I said, I mean, if we want to go ahead and just open something very quickly here to show you. So this is a kind of a cool image of a watch. So it's going to be a very, very large image, but it's very easy, just like anything else that I showed you before. Um, what you want to do is if you go up here, you can go to, um, let me see your image. So you have all these different properties at the top up here as well. So you have file, you can um, save as, you know, those type of things that are very similar as Photoshop. Um, save in incremental version, save incremental backup, create template of image. So there's different things you can do here. The edit is obviously copy, paste, fill, things like that. The view is going to give you kind of your view of the system here. And again, you can go through this and kind of see what it has. Um, and that's kind of interesting to do as well. Um, this is your canvas size, like how you want to go ahead and see that. But the image here, this is where you start getting to more interesting stuff. So for instance, under image here, you can go into, um, let me see here. So you got properties, convert image color space, trim to image size, mirror, you know, scale image to new size. So you can go ahead and do stuff like this where you scale the image to a new size. Again, you guys have all seen this. It's very familiar um, with what you've used in, in, again, Photoshop and things like that. So the width of this image is 5,400 by 3,600. So I can go ahead and change this to, let's say, 2,000 by 1,333 and click OK. 
And uh, again, it did change the image. Uh, there it goes. And uh, you can see the image is now a different size. It's going to be a little bit smaller than I want to work on. So I can go ahead and select the, um, the magnifying tool over here if I can even find it somewhere. Right now I'm unable to find it. Um, but actually, yeah, I won't even use that because all I have to really do is just use my mouse uh, and I can actually use the, the, the scroll, like little scroll mouse on the mouse here and it'll actually zoom in and zoom out for me. Um, there is a zoom tool somewhere, but I, I don't know where it is because I always use my mouse, so I apologize about that. Um, let me go ahead and use this one so we can go ahead and recenter re this. So, so you can see that obviously I resized it, but I resized it to something fairly big, so the resolution's still there. Um, but up here, you obviously have, you know, again, scale image to new size. You have different things you can do up here. Um, rotate the image if you want to. Rotate it 180 degrees, 90 degrees, things like that. Layers, obviously, you guys know all about layers and things like that. So that's you can flatten the layers um, here. Um, you can add new layers, um, things like that. That'll be very similar to Photoshop. You can select all and you can select different images and in different parts of your, your drawing here. And then you can go ahead and filter. Now, this is kind of cool. So the filter, again, if it, if it rings a bell, it's very similar to what you're used to. Um, you go into here and you can actually go, like, for instance, I can go artistic um, and I can go, let's just do uh, oil paint. And it's going to ask me for a brush and smoothness and things like that. So let me go ahead and do that, and it should render this into something that's going to be a little bit interesting here in a second. And there we go. So now it rendered this into an oil painting. You can see that it did change uh, the way that this obviously looks, um, but we don't like it like that, so I'm going to go ahead and un edit, undo that, and we're back to the normal image. But this thing does have a lot of filters um, and you know colors and, and emboss and, and enhance um, you map, uh, and there's some other ones in here as well. Um, Artistic is the one that a lot of people like to use, so you can go ahead and, and you know, obviously try different things like this. Uh, it adds a little bit of interest to your photos and things. So, but again, I'm just trying to you know hammer down that this is something that's very familiar to me and very, should be familiar to you if you've used Photoshop. Finally, there's the settings here. Um, you know, there's themes you can use. Uh, you know, as far as that's the outside of the actual. I'm using, I'm using Krita Dark, but there's other different types of things you can use as far as the way that the actual program works. And basically there's window up here and help. So basically it's very uh, easy to use. So if I wanna go ahead and just create some simple images, maybe I wanna create some banners for my YouTube videos and things like that, um, this tool is gonna be very easy to do. Um, as you can see, you know, depending on what you pick here, um, you can pick a whole bunch of different settings and you can do a lot of things to your images. You can go ahead and create very interesting uh, images uh, that would go with uh, some of your movies maybe that I'm doing like right now, um, things like that. So go ahead and check this out. Again, I'm not going through a full tutorial on this. I'm just going to show you guys what this is all about. Hopefully it piques your interest a little bit and you guys can go out and try it. And uh, I'll go ahead and do a full tutorial on this. I just wanted to show everyone that it's out there in case you didn't know. Go ahead and download it. It's a great tool and we'll catch you on the other side. And so I just wanted to show everyone this tool because, like I said, a lot of tools reinvent the whole user interface and you're kind of used to just one interface, you know, based off of that, that typical Photoshop interface. And you're kind of looking at something and then, you know, you get a new tool and you can't even figure out how to use it. So that's what I was trying to search for. Something just let me do some basic stuff. Let me go ahead and add text and added photos and let me go ahead and resize things very easily and, you know, have, you know, have a little toolbar and just, just like some things I'm used to. Um, if that's what you want, this is a great tool for you. you Again, check it out and... Uh, you know, I hope you like it, but if you don't, uh, give me some suggestions. I mean, obviously, I know of a couple other ones, but go ahead and give me some suggestions if you can. Alrighty, so if you're not actually uh, using a tool like this for your job or if it's not like super important, obviously the best uh, tool out there is going to be Photoshop for anything that you do. This is more going to be for maybe uh, someone that kind of dabbles in you know, photo editing and things like that or just wants to create small little projects. Um, I would recommend Photoshop for sure for, for bigger projects and things that you do that you actually get paid for. Um, but if you're just kind of a small user, if you want to just use this uh, and, and just, you know, obviously like editing uh, just photos and uh, creating like little documents that you can post somewhere, this is a great tool. So check Check it out. All right, everyone, thanks for watching. And if you can subscribe, it's going to really help me out. Plus, I also post some things in the comments about things you want to see, topics maybe about the, the Mac, uh, maybe about even PCs, or I also do finance videos as, as well as these uh, uh, more technical videos. So go ahead and post some things in the comment if you want to see something different. I'll go ahead and obviously make a video and make about two or three a week, so somewhere in that range. So go ahead and do that, and I'll definitely see you guys in a week or so.